This is the Luna Ring, a new smart ring that doesn't just track your daily health, performance and recovery metrics, but also uses AI to give you personalized recommendations on what to do next. Straight leg raises. Lie on your back with one leg bent and the other leg straight. Slowly lift your straight leg to the height of the bent knee, then lower it back down. In fact, it claims to be one of the most accurate wellness devices out there today. And all of that technology crammed into this tiny ring without any monthly subscriptions. Now, I've been using the Luna Ring for the last few weeks and in this video, I'll review its design, talk about all the health, wellness and recovery data it provided me, compare its heart rate sensor accuracy against an ECG chest strap and much much more to find out if the Luna Ring really delivers on all of those promises. Okay, so let's talk about the price of the Luna Ring. Now this thing costs 300 US dollars but you can bring the price down of this ring by using one of the discount codes I've provided in the description box below. And those two discount codes are the only things I asked of from Noise, the company that makes the Luna Ring. When they sent it to me for a detailed test as well as a review. Other than that, all of my opinions are completely unbiased and noise doesn't even get to see this video before I post it on YouTube. So definitely check out those discount codes if you end up buying the Luna Ring. So there's five different colors and finishes available for the Luna Ring, ranging from a classic silver to golds as well as blacks. And like I said at the start, there's no monthly subscription fees to access any of the data and metrics that is being recorded and analyzed by the Luna Ring. The price of the ring is what you pay, which is really good. Now, I've got the Luna Ring in this midnight black color, which I really, really like. Okay, so let's talk about the design and specs of the Luna Ring. And the first thing that came to my mind when I unboxed this was the word polished. This thing feels really well made and in this black color, at least, it feels less plasticky to me than my Aura Ring. Maybe it's just a color thing, but it's not really made of plastic. In fact, it's made of titanium, um, which is meant to be quite tough as well as durable and from my day-to-day -day use it has felt rather nice and smooth to touch and i really like this ridge on the front of the ring hopefully you can see it on camera and that actually helps me know that the sensors are on the right side of my finger which is on the underside and it's really good to see that someone's put some thought and design cues in a ring-based wearable that also serves a purpose now speaking of sensors there's three sensor ridges on the underside of the ring which hopefully you can see now now. And these sensors measure all of your daily heart rate, activities, steps, calories, recovery, as well as sleep metrics. And these sensors are not intrusive in the sense that they don't poke into your finger like some of the older Aura rings did, which had sensor bumps. So these sensors on the Luna ring are quite streamlined and really, really good um, to wear day to day and feel comfortable. Okay, so let's talk about the health, fitness and recovery metrics tracked by the Luna ring. And like I said at the start, there's more than 70 different metrics tracked by this ring and I'll split this section into a couple of different areas to make this easier to discuss. And starting off with activities, the Luna Ring can automatically detect some basic walking and running activities and it's been fairly accurate in detecting these during my use. Um, for anything more than walking or running where I need to increase the frequency of the heart rate sensors on the Luna Ring, um, the activity needs to be started from within the app where there's a few more options available but the list is unfortunately not that extensive. There's this freestyle activity that I've been using quite a lot to record my strength training activity at the gym and there's also the ability to add a workout if I've not managed to start that from the app but bizarrely the list of workouts available there is much longer than the one available to track the activity live. That's something I think needs to be improved so people can pick other common activities before they start performing it like strength training at the gym. Now the AI coach available here is actually quite good. It has these suggested questions aimed at improving my activity levels or just getting a weekly summary. Now I tried asking various things to try and throw it off a bit but it responds fairly well to specific questions as well. Now the app assigns an activity score out of 100 by combining things like how many calories I've expended during the day, my step count, distant walked and my activity levels over the last few days. And on days when I've been particularly lazy it kind of nudges me to pay attention with this red text in the app and it goes into quite a lot of detail in showing me what's contributing to a good optimal or poor score so I can then dial into that specific contributor. Now the ring can detect if I've been sat for too long or have been inactive for longer periods and it has this movement analysis but I haven't received any notification or 
or any nudges or vibrations on my ring um, that tells me to get moving and be a bit more active rather than sedentary. And that's a feature that I'm finding quite a lot in some of the other smart rings. So I think that really needs to be added within the Luna app or within the ring itself. Now, I often get asked about steps count on some of these videos and looking at this chart here, the purple line which represents the Luna ring is actually not that far off from my Garmin as well as Xiaomi wearables which have been quite accurate when it comes to counting my steps. The Aura ring by comparison overestimates my steps on most days. Now, another thing that I've been focusing on over the last few months is upping my cardiovascular health in an attempt to lower my resting heart rate and the Luna ring does a really good job in tracking and trending my resting heart rate over longer periods and it gives me those occasional nudges if my resting heart rate starts drifting upwards over shorter periods. Okay, so let's move on to recovery metrics and this is one of Luna Ring's focus areas. Now I'm training for a half marathon and one of the metrics that I'm focusing on quite a lot is sleep to make sure that I recover adequately these days. And the Luna Ring delivers this by gathering a whole heap of data whilst I'm asleep to feed into different scores and metrics that are presented in this nice and intuitive format within the app. And there's the usual sleep cycle breakdown available here and a ton of other useful metrics when it comes to sleep and recovery. There's also automatic nap detection here, which has been pretty accurate for me. So heart rate variability or HRV is another area where I'm focusing quite a bit as it helps me understand whether I'm balancing my intense activities with sufficient recovery periods. And this is one area where the Luna Ring really delivers well. The Ring has picked up the range of my typical HRV accurately and on days where my HRV drifted below this range, the app picks it up and suggests things to try and bring it back in range. And here's a quick comparison of the HRV measured by the Luna Ring versus my Garmin as well as the Aura Ring really happy with that. Now with the Luna Ring, I did occasionally feel that the sleep scores were a bit generous on some days, but on days where it really mattered, say for example, if I slept really badly at night and felt a bit groggy in the morning, like here, I made a note on the 28th of Feb, um, where the app also suggested a power nap to help boost my daytime recovery levels, which is really helpful. And when it comes to sleep, another problematic area that I have seen in many wearables is predicting accurate sleep start times. So I compare the sleep start times on the Luna Ring versus my Garmin Aura Ring, as well as this Xiaomi fitness tracker. Um, and the results are on the screen. There's a decent correlation between almost all of them. And the Luna Ring has accurately predicted nights where I was awake for quite a bit longer than usual. Now take sleep tracking and recovery recovery data from any wearable with a grain of salt. None of them are going to be 100% accurate, but seeing comparable data like this between Garmin, Aura, as well as the new Luna Ring um, is really positive to see. So I'm quite happy with that. Oh, and before I move on from recovery, the app has also been updated very recently. And there's this new feature called a sleep planner, which shows my ideal bedtime. And if there is a sleep debt, that's basically extra sleep that I might want to add to my usual sleep time. And I can set up a goal here whether I want to recover that sleep debt or try and maintain a consistent sleep schedule. It's good to see new features being constantly added to the Luna Ring app. Lastly, I want to mention the readiness score, which uses activity and sleep data to tell me how prepared I am to take on the day. And I can clearly see what metrics are contributing to this readiness score. So things like heart rate variability, skin temperature, sleep, my previous day's activities and so on. And this is where the Luna Ring brings it all together to help Help me balance out my training with adequate rest and recovery periods. So for me personally, I've mainly been checking out the readiness score as it gives me a holistic view of what my body is trying to tell me. On those occasional days where I did feel sleep scores were perhaps a bit more generous than what I was feeling like, the readiness scores consequently were also a bit higher than what I felt like. But on most days, it has been fairly consistent. For women's health, the Luna Ring actually has a dedicated cycle tracker feature where you can track your cycles, receive insightful messages that interpret signs from the data the ring is collecting such as your body temperature and you can also interact with the AI for cycle specific insights and feedback. And I'll post a useful link in the description box below which explains all of this in a bit more detail. Okay, so let's look at battery life and the Luna Ring is claimed to last for up to 7 days on a single charge which is quite impressive given the size of this thing. But in my testing, the Luna Ring lost around 8% battery 
battery every night whilst I was sleeping, but the blood oxygen measurements were also switched on, and around 1 to 2% during activities, which is really, really good. Overall, the Lunar Ring lasted for just over 7 days, which is exactly as per the manufacturer's spec. Um, but note that smaller sized rings will have a slightly smaller battery, which may last for just under 7 days. But for me personally, I'm quite happy charging this thing just once every week. So let's talk about the heart rate sensor accuracy of the Lunar Ring. Now, extracting raw heart rate data from the Lunar Ring is not quite possible at the time of filming, but I'll still show you um, an extract of the average heart rates as well as the total calories burned for several different activities against my trusty Polar H10 chest strap. It uses ECG technology to measure heart rate and it's often considered as the gold standard for heart rate measurement. Let's look at indoor cycling on a Peloton bike, which is one of the easiest activities for a wearable to record. Now here the chest strap measured an average heart rate of 147 beats per minute and 367 calories with the lunar ring recording a slightly lower average heart rate of 117 beats per minute and 265 calories. Now for outdoor running the lunar ring has been fairly accurate against the chest strap with the average and maximum heart rates being just a few beats per minute off. The total calories burnt were also fairly close to the chest strap. Now for strength training the chest strap measured my average heart rate of 126 beats per minute and 396 calories burnt. The lunar ring was a bit far off from this with an average heart rate of just 87 beats per minute. Now I've also been using Garmin's Instinct 3 for all of my activities at the same time and this has a long history of consistent heart rate readings against my chest strap. So I'll plot a chart of average heart rate measured for different activities and I'll also add in the aura rings measurement throughout this testing period. And it's quite evident that on some occasions the lunar ring is very very close to the Garmin and these are mostly for running sessions both outdoors as well as indoors. Um, the ones that are a bit off were for strength training as well as cycling sessions. The movement of a smart ring and therefore its sensors around your finger when you're doing intense activities is not something new. In fact I had exactly the same issue when I tested Samsung's Galaxy Ring as well as the Aura Ring which I'll put in the pop-out banner right now for you to check out and I feel like lifting, pulling, pushing weights with the Lunar Ring on um, is causing all of those movements and therefore all of those inaccuracies when it comes to strength training. It's just the nature of these things and the location of the sensors. On the other hand, if you went for a wrist-based optical heart rate sensor, such as on a Garmin Polar Sunto Sports Watch or even a Samsung Galaxy Watch or an Apple Watch, you can tighten the straps to get a proper lock between the sensor as well as your wrist. Um, whereas with smart rings, you're just at the mercy of the size of the ring you picked when you ordered it and you're just hoping um, for the ring and the sensors to stabilize whilst you're doing your intense activities. Okay so let's quickly talk about the other features within the Lunar Ring app and I've shown you the app quite a bit already. I personally like the dark color scheme throughout the app's interface with these glowing trend lines everywhere in the app. Now it's quite easy to get lost in all of this data but I think Luna have done a good job adding this health monitor tile in the app which I normally just look at once if I'm in a rush and if it shows me all of these metrics in green then I feel like I don't need to dive into anything specific. But on days where something is off, the health monitor will flag it up as a red icon and then I can dial into that specific metric and do things to balance it out like go to bed a bit early or focus more on activity levels. Every key metric has some useful blogs readily available to help me understand what that metric means to my overall well-being. I wanted to mention something more about Luna AI. I can ask it to generate a training program by giving it some basic information on what I'm training for and it will automatically generate this plan that I can choose to save in the app's calendar. I can do exactly the same for any nutrition plans that the AI and the app will save to keep me a bit more organized than I usually am. So I'm going to start asking Luna AI a few questions and see how conversational and how quick it is to respond. So um, I've done the whole text thing. It takes some time to load, but I'm going to use the voice enabled um, AI here and see how it performs. So let's see how this goes. Can you give me some specific exercises to strengthen my muscles around my knees so I don't go and injure my knees whilst I'm doing longer runs? Strengthening the muscles around your knees is a great way to support your running and reduce the risk of injuries. Here are a few beginner friendly exercises that can help. One, straight leg raises. Lie on your back with one leg bent and the other leg straight. 
slowly lift your straight leg to the height of the bent knee, then lower it back down. Two, wall sits. Stand with your back against a wall and slide down until your knees are at about a 90 degree angle. Hold this position for about 20 to 30 seconds and then stand back up. Three, hamstring curls. Bend your knee to bring your heel toward your buttocks while standing or lying face down. This targets the hamstrings, which are important for knee stability. Four, calf raises. Stand with your feet shoulder width apart and slowly raise your heels off the ground, then lower them back down. It's always good to start slowly and increase the intensity as you become more comfortable and stronger. How does that sound? Are you currently active? So that voice-based AI is much better. It's so much quicker than the text-based responses where, I don't know, it maybe takes a few seconds for it to do some number crunching, but this is really good in getting some quick insights and recommendations on how to manage training load and probably many other things. Now, one amazing thing which I mentioned previously is that all of this stuff that I'm showing you on the screen is completely free. There's no monthly subscriptions like some of the other brands. And I'm quite pleased to see this ongoing commitment from Noise in providing all of this collected data for free to all of the users. So then what do I think about this smart ring? Now, I feel that the Luna Ring really nails its key focus areas, which are wellness and recovery. The data within the Luna Ring app is presented intuitively and it summarizes all of those key metrics really, really well, yet gives me the freedom to dial into any of those metrics to whatever level of detail I want. Um, the AI integration, which at first I thought was a gimmick, performs really well. Um, I tried to throw it off quite a few times, but it kept responding to my specific questions. It's just just that it takes a few seconds before it responds to you, presumably because it's doing some number crunching in the background before giving you proper feedback. Um, I also like the fact that all of the data, the analyses, the recommendations and the feedback are provided for free to all users, which is a massive bonus here, by the way, because in a time where we've got major brands that have established themselves for many years, like Aura, are charging users a monthly subscription fee, we've now got something like the Luna Ring, which is flying under the radar, producing this really cool product with a really cool app, with a really cool interface, um, giving massive value for money to all users. So I think this is definitely worth checking out. And if you do end up buying this ring, use one of the discount codes um, in the description box below, which will bring the price of this ring down for you. All right, so I just wanted to say thanks to all you amazing subscribers and to new viewers. Don't be shy from pressing the subscribe button, especially if you don't want to miss out on more comparison videos videos between the Luna Ring, the Aura Ring, as well as other smart rings, and my deep dive into the all-new Garmin Instinct 3. See you in the next one.